Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another banner prediction video. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I did I not just make one of these? I did, but uh, I had to put it, pull it down for reasons that I will not discuss. So I'm doing it again. Okay. So the last time, before the last time that I made one of these banner prediction type videos was way, way, way back on May fifth. Now a lot has changed in the hero cadence release structure. Release structure. Yes, got that right. And as well, um, since then, I've kind of seen and uh, marked a pattern in hero release cadence, which we're going to get into in this video. So we're going to dive right in. Ladies and gentlemen, if you watched the first video that I did prior to like two days ago, thank you for watching that. If you're watching that again, um, put repeat viewer, repeat viewer down in the comments. Um, wasn't my intention to make two videos, but, uh, we're going to get into this because I think that, um, Eternal Evolution has done a lot of things right, and they've made a lot of changes to hero release cadence, um, in the last few months that it deserves some discussion, and it also deserves our thanks because they are helping us out. But there are some glaring holes, which we're going to get into, and this video should help you possibly prepare for what's coming next over the next, uh, one to two months. So I think I can make a general accurate assessment of what's coming in the next two weeks but then further out I can, I'm, I'm just guessing but my guesses have all kind of turned out to be true so bear with me as we go over spreadsheets yes everybody's favorite thing spreadsheets okay so first things first what I want to discuss over here what that I got highlighted all the way to your right this is chip store data right so two week shop that is the whatever the new hero banner is those that's the shop for that banner the one week shop is obviously the mid cycle banner that is always up for one week, right? Like right now, I, Luke is who we got in the mid week shop. Now, you can see that over here, these dates, they're all color coded. So if a hero is that color, that was the last time they were uh, released. Now, a lot of these heroes say in the two week shop have been released a uh, over and over and over again. As such, you can kind of see like Miranda, who is right at the very top. Uh, actually, last time she was re was released was June eighth. Or when I say released, it means you could buy a copy of her for 120 chips in the shop. Now, the one week shop has become very, very, very um, static. So these characters: Daniel, Skur, Zeta, Mazrani, Crete, Emma, Ravenna, Azina, and Luke are always, always in this shop for chips. Now I've said it a couple times. Now I'm going to say it again. These heroes that are here all the time should be uh, dialed down to 60 or 80 chips. There is no reason why these legacy heroes should be 120 chips. Who do we use here? Daniel, yes, still has a place on a team. Skur, Justin Guildhunt. Zeta has a place on team. Mazrani, excellent. Crete does have a place on a team. Emma, uh, used in Disa Caves and this new Endless Battle. Ravenna, kind of, Ravenna's kind of edged out. Azina, she's kind of edged out, and Luke is still viable. Uh, so there are a lot of heroes in here that uh, maybe people want, but maybe people don't want to spend 120 chips on a semi worthless hero. Let's dial that cost back, okay? Now, this column right here, the two week shop, and this big section right here kind of go hand in hand because these are. Uh, I like to call newer release heroes, right? Like uh, heroes, uh, hero release generation two. I'd say, let's call them generation two heroes. Even though I think now uh, we are with the introduction of the last hunter. Now all the teams are round out. Now we can kind of start talking about generation three heroes because um, heroes that have a place on a team are now starting to get pushed out, AKA Ravenna, right? So this two week shop, you can see that they are starting to release some pretty important heroes for chips. Barag is in the store right now. Barag is a key hero for a lot of content in this game, as well as for PvP. Rhyzeris is also in the shop right now. She is probably the engine, one of uh, one half of the engine that makes hunters go. Wamagon was in the shop off banner last week, or I should say July 8th, which was, I guess, you know, half a month, two weeks ago. Uh, and then Sorvali, Ampu, Masrani even showed up in here. Dominic and Rickert are in the shop right now, which are the, the duos that make the hunter team or the assassin team go. 
Uh, so you can kind of get a, a sense here that they're releasing or giving us the opportunity to pick up a copy, which all you need is just a copy if you miss the banner, and then you can work on them with gene hybrids. All of these heroes, with maybe the exception of Bada, and, uh, and yeah, Bada, are good heroes to work on for gene hybrids. So, but there are, if we go over here to this big section, there are heroes that have still never shown up in the shop off of a banner. So if, if they are the banner hero, they're obviously in the, in the shop, but there are a few characters that have never shown up in the shop off of their banner. And that is Rebecca, which is understandable. She's in there right now. Jaina, understandable. She was the last new hero. So it's going to be a few weeks before we see her in the shop, possibly. Uh, and then we got up top here, Northeon, Bailey, and Leo. Now, Bailey, he is arguably not that great. I think he's going to be replaced here in about uh, three weeks, four weeks off of the Assassin team altogether. But it is notable that Leo, um, there are places to get Leo in game. So I think he's the 11 or no, the, I think the 1000 or the 900 uh, hero rally pull reward. So you can, if you save up a lot, you can get a copy of Leo if you don't have a leo or if you've missed his banners altogether uh save up your advanced tickets you need to save for a few months to hit that benchmark but you can get leo in game for free uh bailey you can as well he is also in the hero rally he is the 700 pull reward so you can get him the only hero that has never shown up in the shop uh, other than jane and rebecca and has never shown up in a place that you can get for free is Northion, and that's all we're going to discuss. 16 weeks since he came out, the longest um, different or the longest wait time between banners, and with no other place to get him in game other than spending money. Okay, so that is an interesting thing to discuss in and in and of itself about hero releases. They are giving us opportunities to get more heroes out of the two week chip shop. It's just you have to spend 120 chips. And I know for free to play, those don't come very lightly. Now, these are, I would say, uh, these are really, uh, other than Daniel, these are uh, pre launch characters, right? Masrani, Emma, Skur, Ravenna, Daniel, Luke. Um, you can get all of them except for Ravenna. No, Ravenna's in there too. Okay. So these, these characters, um, as you see, have absolutely monstrous uh, differences. Uh, in since or, or, or wait times but since their last banner I don't think they're ever gonna come back I was actually really surprised that Luke came back because uh, he it had been forever for him as well like I, I don't I can't remember I think it was 20 some weeks um, I think we will see a Daniel return shortly but other than that I don't think we're ever gonna see Masrani Emma uh, or Ravenna in a banner ever again it's your if you want them you're going to have to get them through either the Endless Battle Ticket Store, which we'll discuss next, or you're going to have to pay 120 chips. Again, I don't think 120 is right. I think it should be 80 or 60. Um, Skur, they added her in the Battle Pass, albeit for money, but you can get two copies a month, or you can still pick up a copy of Skur in the uh, one-week chip shop for 120 chips. Now, Skur is... Everybody that spends money is probably going to buy the Battle Pass to get a max score, even though I don't think she's worth it anymore. I think I have her at Immortal 3 or 2. 2 or 3, and she's not hyper-evolved. She's X20. She does everything I need her to do. She is better, more, but just, I think that's a waste of resources. But I don't want to discuss these. I'm just saying, don't expect Masrani to ever have a banner. Don't expect Emma, Score, or Venna ever to have a banner ever again. You're going to have to, if you want to copy them, you're going to have to get them either in the uh, the Hero Rally 500 pull reward, which is the SSS selector. So you can get one of them a month. They're easy to get 500. You just have to save up for about a month. Uh, and then you can probably get one of them for free, right? Free to play can get all of them. Uh, but Endless Battle Ticket Store. Okay. Uh, and, and this we're going to take off because I was thinking of making something with that, but we don't have to worry about that. The Endless Battle Ticket Store, in my opinion, and this is the event that has replaced... Um, actually, let's go in-game and we'll talk about it, right? So then you're not looking at a spreadsheet. Let's, 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 let's switch it up a little bit. Okay. So this is the Endless Battle Chip Shop, right? So you get... Um, well, you get enough of these yellow ones, which is under my head. Actually, let's move my head up here. 
you get enough of these yellow ones that you can get a copy pretty much every cycle, right? Every month. And these are heroes that, uh, like Guan Yu, they gave us one banner uh, for him to get him. Um, he was in a limited time, uh, I think, no, that was the program we shall not discuss. Uh, so they gave one banner and then one time they kind of like screwed up and put him in the chip shop and people were going crazy. Oh, Guan Yu's in the chip shop. Guan Yu still sucks, but he is available for 120 of these, uh, yellow tickets. If you are so inclined to save them and pick one up, the only really people in here that I feel are important, um, and, and notable to discuss is Moriyami. It is really nice that the developers put Moriyami in this shop because up till now, the only way to get a copy of Moriyami was free to play, was through winning uh, Summon Arena or getting placing in the top 16, right? That was the only way you could really get... Actually, you know what? I think you could get a copy for... Yes, no, you could get a copy... You didn't have to pl have rank. You, even if you made it like group stage 1 or 2, you got some... Uh, some selector shards and that selector shards was I do believe Rez, Moriyami and I can't remember the, I can't remember the other one I don't want to say because I don't want to get it wrong but you could get that even though it was it, it would take you forever to get her through summon arena but now you can get a couple a copy here you can get maybe two if you save your yellow chips and don't spend them on anything else but Zeta is really good here and like I said Moriyami is, is a solid solid uh, person for the hunter team Prigor and Natalus are down here, but you can get them through Twilight fairly easily, even on my free-to-play. I have a, 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 an immortal uh, Natalus and, a, and an almost immortal Prigor just from that. So this shop is uh, really excellent. Uh, with the uh, blue tickets, you know, I know people seem to think that Rise of Hero was better because you got Shards of Heroes. You can still get Shards of Heroes here. You get a lot of these blue tickets. It's just up to you whether or not you want to decide to use them on resources or to use them on Hero Shards, right? So, um, R Rakana and uh, Omar have never been in Rise of Heroes, which is uh, odd that they're here. But uh, Kalaza, um, Vagnus, Nafang, Old John, those are all Rise of Heroes characters. The ones that we're missing is uh, Nagrama and uh, Senwe, right? But still, this shop is excellent. It gives players another chance to get more heroes, more hero copies in a month, just for free, just playing the game, which, so they are giving us more. They're giving us more ways to get these heroes because as they add more heroes, it becomes harder to get them. So they have to kind of offset that increased difficulty to get older copies of heroes with things like this. Okay, so now we're going to get into the uh, piece de resistance, my, uh, you know, there's a, there's a meme going around, you see of, like, that guy from, I can't remember what show it is, but he's got, like, the board all done up, uh, with, like, the string attached, pointing everywhere, that's me on this one. So prior, uh, to this video, way back on May 5th, all I was doing was I was documenting when the hero was released and the space between, uh, releases, right? But then I added, I added double chips, and I was kind of pleased to know the double chips happen all, or not double chips, giant towers happen all the time. Um, ever since, like, back here, there might have been some, but I couldn't find them when I went through the notes. But starting on, like, January 26th, Luke was in a giant, or Crete was in a giant tower, and then we had a holiday event, and then it was pretty much, it's pretty much every two weeks, except for a holiday event. Like, down here, the double chip holiday event, uh, the dual one at April, which was Easter, uh, they skipped Giant Tower there because they gave us all these cool uh, Easter events. And up here you can see they skipped uh, uh, a Giant Tower here when uh, Valentine's Day was, was out. But uh, for the most part, Giant Towers are every two weeks. And that's a really, really good way, especially now that they've synced it with the Hero Rally. A really good way for you to get more copies of Heroes for free. But you do have to save up a buffer of limited tickets. You need 80 of them. And it's kind of hard to save 80 tickets on an off New Hero Banner Week. But... On my free-to-play account, I've been able to do it, so you can too. Uh, but what I've also done since that May 5th video is I've noticed that they have cycles, right? They have all these interlinking cycles that uh, form a little bit of a pattern. So you see right back at the beginning, there was a little bit of a, a, a hunter cycle. And I say that because it had a Xena and then Emma were the two benchmarks. And then we went into a summoner cycle. We had Skour and Hattie, Ampu, Sorvali, and Daniel. And then even I could have put it down here because we had Ampu and Cervelli in this banner as well. So a big old, they just bombarded us with summoners back then. And then 
they threw some interesting things. So this, I could probably put this as an assassin cycle because we did get Bailey and Rickert. I'm actually going to add that to my little chart because this is probably, yeah, this would be an assassin cycle. Uh, they did give us this uh, Idar boss this week with Rickert, which, um, yeah, this is definitely an assassin cycle. So went summoner, assassin, and then Vanguard, you see, was Leo and Guan Yu. And then right in the middle of that Vanguard cycle was an energy cycle, Northeon, March 2nd, and Ravenna. And then it kind of fell into a little bit of a lockstep pattern. So we got tanks with Pandemonium and Zeta. Um, we got a summoner cycle, Ampu, Sorvali, and Daniel. And then intermixed onto that was a hunter cycle with Rhyzeris. And then we had uh, Miranda, who buffs hunters, and Azena. And then we went into another assassin, a true assassin cycle, Rickert, Dominic, and Bailey. Uh, and then intermixed into that was tanks, Panda, Wamagon, Zeta. And then we had this tiny little vanguard cycle, Leo and Barag. Technically, you could put Bada in there as well. Healers, they slot a healer in every once in a while. And then this June 1st, <coughs> pardon me, this was that random, just, they just threw a pandemonium at us, just out of nowhere. No one thought that was going to happen. I think everybody thought that was the most likely part or moment when they were going to give us Nord because they immediately followed that up with um, an energy cycle, but it was tiny. It was like Jaina, Miranda, and then you see it was kind of capped off with Luke. So it goes Assassin, Tank, Vanguard, Energy, Hunter. And then if we go all the way to the top, what came after Hunter? Summoner. And you see here, Hunter, Summoner. You see the pattern? And also, it's uh, Hunter, Summoner, Assassin. Hunter, Summoner, Assassin. Tank, Vanguard, Energy, Hunter. And then we'll get into the um, forecasted summoner and assassins. You see, they follow a pattern. It's not a one for one. It's not a hard set in stone pattern. You can't like set your watch by it, but it is a loose pattern. And it is for the most part holding uh, very, very, very accurate. So I called Barag coming out here. As soon as I saw Leo as uh, the giant tower, Hard confirmed we are getting a Vanguard, new Vanguard, and a new Vanguard came out. And then Bod and Pandemonium came out. But since, uh, let's see, there was no Vanguard cycle. Yes, up here, Vanguard, and then it went Energy. And you can kind of see, you can kind of guess, read the tea leaves, since what cycles have come before that Vanguard cycle and what is still yet to come. And I called that Energy was coming next, and I called it with Jaina. And I almost even called Jaina as a, some of her abilities. She was exactly what I forecasted. Uh, and then, since energy, I knew it was going to be either... Since tanks kind of got double whacked at us right in here, um, it couldn't have been tank. So I said it has to be a start of a hunter cycle, and we got Rebecca, right? Now, this wishlist banner, which had a hunter and two summoners in it. Okay, so that starts the bookend for the summoner cycle. Now, I had thought... That tomorrow's banner, if you're watching this tomorrow, you're going to already know the outcome to this. But I was forecasting a giant tower with Daniel. We haven't had a Daniel in uh, 12 weeks. So that's four, three months. That's about right. I figured since we're going into a summoner cycle, that Daniel would be the giant tower. But, and this is where it's interesting. Um, you, you can read the text on the screen. I was on the official EE Discord today, and I had a uh, one of their official moderators adamantly argue with me that he was hundred one that he knew for a fact one hundred percent that tomorrow it's going to be a Dominic banner with a giant tower. I find it funny that an official associate of the game would be leaking data on their official Discord. So, shout out to Unleashed. So, you guys can read that. So, that's cool. Uh, Dominic's good. It's going to help everybody in the current Endless Battle because Dominic is needed in all three battles. Go check out my Endless Battle videos if you want to know why. And that also means that uh, I can push my Dominic to higher evolutions. I actually prefer because my Dan is MO5. I don't need any more Dan, but maybe you do. And I still think that uh, knowing that, that piece of information that I learned this morning. If you want to see the uh, basically the conversation, it was at 9 a.m. roughly Central Standard Time on the official Discord general chat channel. 
<laughs> okay, shout out to them. Um, so that pushes Dan back to July 6th. So um, I have here a summoner coming out on July 6th. I don't know what PIV leak is. Um, hmm, PIV. I don't know. But uh, you guys can uh, can uh, count on it that it is going to be a, a new summoner coming out July 6th. Can't tell you why. I don't know what PIV means. Interesting. So, Rhizeris and Pusor Valley kicked off the summoner cycle. Uh, we're going to be going into it not this next week. So, not tomorrow. Not June 29th when you guys are probably watching this for the most part. Um, but, um, Dominic... It will be the bookend for the Assassin Cycle that comes after the Summoners or is interlinked with it. So we're going to get Dominic with the Giant Tower tomorrow. Um, the patch notes are coming out in like seven hours. And then we're going to get the new Summoner. And since we had Ampu and Sorvali up here, uh, my guess or my educated guess is that we're going to get a Dan as the complimentary uh, banner to that summoner because Dan, they've given us enough ample opportunities to get Anpu and Sor Valley. You could have got a lot of them if you guys were pulling on that wishlist banner. Uh, so you should have them up and running at a manageable level. Uh, the only one they haven't really given us in a while, unless you're a brand new player in week two, is they haven't given us an opportunity to get Dan in 13 weeks as of July 6th. So that will be the end, the other book end of the summoner cycle. And then you see we'll just carry on with the Assassin Cycle that's going to start tomorrow. And what's going to happen, we're probably going to get Rickard as the Giant Tower banner on July 13th. And then we're going to get, uh, or actually this Rickard spot could be, okay, what comes after Assassin's Tanks? So there is a uh, there is a good possibility that Zeta is going bye bye on the tank team um, in August. Uh, so maybe... They'll give us uh, Wamagon. This this Rickert is actually probably going to be Wamagon. Because that's going to kick off a tank cycle. And then this return banner that comes with the new Assassin on July 20th will probably be Rickert's return. So we'll get a Dominic Giant Tower on June 29th tomorrow if that mod is correct. Um, I don't know the the reliability of mod leaks. I still find it funny that mods are leaking banner schedules. Uh, but uh, yeah, Wamagon. How long will it have been since Wamagon came out? Let's do some sleuthing. Where is he? He's right there. May 11th. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks. That's about right. That's about right. Will be nine weeks. Since global release. So there we go. We just we just uh we just updated my sheet live and then I, I turned that blue. That would make sense that we're getting Wamagon right there. Nordwen. <laughs> so uh, let's turn my head on here so that we can like at least see my face looking at this. So that this seems about right. You guys can screenshot this if you want. Um, this uh, this spreadsheet is linked in the description of this video. I have all of my uh, master spreadsheet data linked there. So, Dominic tomorrow. New summoner, July 6th. Probably with Dan. July 13th, probably a Wamagon with the Giant Tower if the cadence holds true. Because usually tanks follow assassins. Um, yeah, and then you guys can see how this goes. Like, vanguards are going to follow tanks. Uh, but they do have to find a place to slot in a new su a new support in here. So we are due for new support, so that can happen too. The only things I know for certain, according to um, Leaky Lips, uh, is uh, Dominic and Summoner. Still don't know what that PIV is. And then I'm just guessing. But these are educated guesses based on uh, previous data. So probably Wamagon though, because that makes sense that they would want to give him on a giant tower. And then probably a new assassin. So Bailey's going to go bye-bye on July 20th. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my banner prediction video for June 27th. Um, I know I told people to put like returning viewer or return viewer at the beginning. But uh, let's, let's, let's give a word of the day. Hmm. <laughs> Pitbull. Why? Well, I got a painting of my pit bull behind me on behind my monitor here. So pit bull, 
is the word of the day, not the rapper. I don't know. You go, whatever. Put Pitbull in the comments. I'll know you made it to the end of this video. And tell me what you think of the video. Um, um, like I said, I've been right four out of four times. Oh, wait. No, wait. If, if, if it does happen to be a summoner on July 6th, I have called it ahead of time correctly four out of four times. And then if it's an assassin, the streak will continue. But um, I've been pretty good at this, so uh, yeah, I think so. Why am I looking at Idar? That's stupid. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, the word of the day is Pitbull. Put that down in the comments. Thank you for coming. I'll catch you in the next one. I got a whole lot of tier list videos coming out for the end of June. Um, basically, Thursday morning, I am booking a day off work to sit here and just record. And then I'm going to try to get them all out on the what is 27th the 29th and the 30th so expect a huge content drop for me on the 29th and the 30th and till then oh i just whacked myself in the ear see you in the next one ladies and gentlemen cheers peace bye bye what is the pi